Hello, this is Retro TK2, and today we're learning about actions and funks in C Sharp. If this is the first video you're seeing in the C Sharp series, I'd strongly suggest watching the series from the start. Card should be on your screen now. And if you haven't already, might I suggest downloading the channel files that accompany this video? Card should be on your screen once again. So let's get started. What is an action? Well, according to the Microsoft Docs, an action encapsulates a method that has no parameters and does not return a value. You can use this delegate to pass a method as a parameter without explicitly declaring a custom delegate. The encapsulated method must correspond to the method signature that is defined by this delegate. This means that the encapsulated method must have no parameters and no return value. Typically, such a method is used to perform an operation. When you use the action delegate, you do not have to explicitly define a delegate that encapsulates a parameterless procedure. It's also important to note is that you can use the action generic T delegate if you want a method that has a single parameter or more than one parameter. It's important to note here is that actions are used in generics, and we'll touch upon them a little bit later in the series. For now, we'll just take it slow with them. As you can see, MSDN says it encapsulates a method that has a single parameter and does not return a value. Okay, excellent, that's actions out of the way. But what are funks? Well, according to MSDN, a func encapsulates a method that has no parameters and returns a value of the type specified by the t result parameter. As you can see, func also uses generic series with the t result being our return type, but we'll go over that a little bit later in the video. You can use this delegate to represent a method that can be passed as a parameter without explicitly declaring a custom delegate. The encapsulated method must correspond to the method signature that is defined by this delegate. This means that the encapsulated method must have no parameters and must return a value. Exactly the same as the action definition is. When you use the func.t result delegate, you do not have to explicitly define a delegate that encapsulates a parameterless method. Again, very similar to the action. Okay, so we've read all about these, yes, let's see them in our code. Open up Unity and create a basic c -sharp script. As always, make sure you give your script a different name than any other class in your project. I'll also be using Unity Spice for all our logouts here, yes. If you'd like to get it yourself, just follow the card on your screen now and follow the instructions after that. Right, yes, so actions and functs. Basically, an action is very like a delegate or a delegate handler and instead of having to declare the delegate you can simply use a method of the same signature bear with that for the moment is we'll just go over this now so to declare it you type in action and you'll also need to import the system action uh, namespace so we'll do that now and our action is just going to be simply called action so if I leave that as is now, you'll see that if I use action, I can use action in a similar way that we would at any one of our delegates or the delegate handlers and our event handlers, just by simply evoking it like so. Very similarly though is, if I go and attempt to call this thing by waiting for Unity to recompile, dragging our script onto any game object in this scene and running the game, you'll see we get a null reference exception. This is because our action hasn't been assigned anything yet, yes. So let's create a method to assign it to. So void method, very simple method, no return, no nothing, and set it equal to this. As you can see, we can't do that, of course, because it's not static. Okay, so let's just, in the start method, assign it like so, the way we've been doing before is. And even with the action delegates and all that fun stuff, you can use the plus equal syntax uh, that we've come to expect with our delegates, our delegate handlers. So there you go, yes. And of course, all works exactly the same as you would expect it to, yes, with the minus equal also taking it away and making it a null. So now if I go back into Unity, actually it's just log out something just to make it so that uh, we know that it's working. Save and head back into Unity and rerun the game. And you'll see that log is logged. All very basic stuff here is. But okay, now so if we wanted to create a method that had a parameter, this is where uh, the MSDN uh, definition comes into play. So let's give it an int. And yeah, all seems perfectly fine now. But 
then actually I won't call this method. I'll call it method two. So now if I try and assign action to method two, you'll see that we get an issue here since expected method with void method two signature. And of course we've got a parameter coming in of int i. So in order to get around that, we need to create an action that takes a generic parameter. We haven't touched on generics yet, yet so just bear with this one for the moment. Uh, this one is going to use, we'll call it action int actually, just to make sure. This int represents our parameter here, yes. And yeah, I mean, really that's pretty much all that needs to be said about that. So now if I go to action int, you can see that now there's no errors and I can invoke it like so. And I also need to pass in the parameter, of course. And now if I go to i uh, to string.log, you'll see that, oh, and see if I head back into Unity, of course and rerun the game, you'll see that 99 is logged. Very, very similar, yes. So yeah, we've looked at actions. Now let's have a little look at funks. Uh, so funk is a little bit uh, different than the action. It doesn't even have a, a non-generic version since the funk, of course, needs to have a return type. So let's give it a return type string and let's call it funk string. And by the way, both action int and func string is yes, will initiate with uh, null reference. Uh, so we do have to actually assign them to something. Otherwise, well, the code will crash and burn with our null reference exceptions. And let's assign this equal to a int method three, why not? And then of course have the return type zero and then put method three assign it to Funk string like so is. Now we are getting the expected meth a method with oh sugar it's a string not an int. <laughs> I was thinking something else. There we go, excellent. So now you see it all goes completely fine, and of course we can then go and call our func string. Okay, so func string, and then we'll just log out func string. How about that? That makes sense to me, and we will return func string here. Just to prove that it all works, go back into Unity. I think you've seen it by now, yes. I think you already know what we're doing. And so yeah, it shouldn't be that uh, too disobvious. And there we go, funk string. So now you can also go in and very like the action, you can put in a type beforehand if you would want to. So let's do a, or sorry, not a type beforehand. You can put in parameters. So let's put in an int and int and then we'll have a string and we'll call this funk string two. Yeah, why not? Keep up with the terrible names, yes. And of course, we're gonna have a method four. <laughs> why not? And now if I go and alt and enter and then do create method, we should hopefully, yeah, create it with all of the ones you would expect to see here is. So I one, or let's actually just say X and Y. X, Y for our parameters. And we don't wanna throw an exception. We want to return, um, Let's return X and Y. Yeah, why not? X plus and plus Y. Yeah, that'll do rightly. Uh, we haven't actually gone over this sort of syntax before, yes, with these strings, but we'll probably go over that in a future video. So let's now go in here. We will do nine and we will do one and we will log out the result. Super basic is, yes, and hopefully you can see, I'm really hammering on this topic. <laughs> hopefully now you know how to define and use action funks. And as you can see, nine and one is logged. Brilliant. Now, one last thing on this is, yes, if you remember our delegates uh, from before, let's go in with this. You'll see that actions and funks are not assignable to delegates that have the same signature which is a great shame. Let's just uh, hammer this home now. So we want a my del, and we want it to have a parameter int, I will say. And we also want to give it a, create a delicate handler. Del handler, excellent. And then we want to try and prove that we cannot assign these like so. So action int has the exact same signature as del handler, but as you'll see is we, kind of convert source type uh, system action int to target type my del, which is a great shame is yes. we can't even uh, use a cast like so is yes. and we can't even we also can't use an as 
assignment either. We'll go over all of this later, yes, but uh, for the moment, this is more just to prove that anybody who does know about the conversion methods that you can use, you can't actually do it via a built-in conversion. We will, of course, go over all of that in a later video, yes. It's a great shame that you can't actually assign delegates to uh, their Action or Funk uh, counterparts that have the exact same signature since, well, it would be just kind of a useful thing. I must admit, I don't really use delegates. I use Action and Funk all the time, yes. So uh, certainly, yeah, by all means, you can use it too. And that will do it for this episode. So yeah, rate, comment, and subscribe, yes. I hope you're having as much fun watching the series as I am doing it. You can email me at retrotk2 at gmail.com if you're having troubles with the delegates, actions, and events. Thank you for watching this, and I'll see you in the next video.